There we go. All right, so welcome everyone. Uh, real quick before we jump into the session here, I just wanted to do a quick uh, overview of TAM Lab and uh, encourage everyone to uh, start getting involved. So these are the four social channels that we have set up. On the bottom right is the link to our SharePoint site. So spread the word and uh, reach out if you want to get involved and maybe help host a, a session. With that, um, welcome to TAM Lab number nine. And today we're going to have Nico Guerrera presenting on how to troubleshoot with vRealize Login Site or VRLI. So thank you, Nico. I'm uh, super excited because most of my customers have Login Insight and uh, you know they get it set up and then I feel like a lot of times they don't know what to do with it. So I think this will be a good session. So with that, I will stop sharing and I'll hand it over to you. All right, thank you. All right, let me share my screen. How's it look, everyone? Looks good. Cool. All right, so like you said, Steve, um, I have talked to a lot of customers who have Log Insight, including my own. Um, and every time they have an issue uh, or a problem, uh, the first thing I ask them is, well, what did, what did Log Insight say? And their response is, uh, I don't know, I didn't check it. So they have this thing running. Uh, it's pulling in all their logs, very valuable. Um, even the company I was at before, um, VMware, I deployed Log Insight, um, got it going, and then nobody ever used it. Um, and it's very simple to use for troubleshooting. So, you know, I basically came to the conclusion that um, if I'm going to get people to use this, um, an overview of how to use it, uh, how to troubleshoot with it, you know, some examples and things like that would be really useful. Uh, I wrote a blog uh, on this topic, kind of a, a short, you know, what you can do to troubleshoot with Log Insight um, at, a, at a high level. Um, so I think this would be a good opportunity for, for TAMs to kind of bring to their customers and show some of the value that Log Insight brings beyond just pulling in logs and, you know, maybe checking it every once in a while once you uh, have a problem, you know, if they even check it, if they have a problem. Um, so assuming your customer has Log Insight, you know, set up and installed and, and pulling logs and things like that, um, they can give you a lot of good information. So I have my Log Insight instance over here in my lab that I'm running. Um, it's pulling in logs not just from uh, vCenter and ESX. It's also pulling logs from my Linux hosts. It's pulling logs from my, my home NAS, which, which hosts some of my storage. And it's pulling logs from things like Apache and, and, and apps like that. So Log Insight on its own could be pretty valuable for, for VMware administrators to troubleshoot ESX hosts or troubleshoot vCenter and stuff like that. Um, but if they ever want to go beyond kind of just that middle hypervisor level, to be able to look both up at the app and down, you know, either the networking or storage, it provides that ability. And, you know, no one's telling um, any of the SAN people or the, net, you know, the, the networking people, they have to change all their tools and start using Log Insight or something like that. You know, this is just good for the, the VMware administrators to kind of have that full picture of what's going on. So if people start complaining that my app isn't working or something is going wrong sideways, my VM's not acting as it should, you know, they can do some of the troubleshooting themselves without having to pull in the storage team and that's the source team to look at logs or having to pull in the networking team, networking team to look at logs. Um, it gives you that kind of full view if you set it up properly from um, soup to nuts and kind of troubleshooting what is in your environment. Um, so we start with the uh, nuts and bolts over here. Uh, the, the, you know, the first place, if you're going to show your customer how to troubleshoot with Log Insight, we have these content packs and we have uh, over here, it's called a, you know, uh, we have some dashboards. We have a general set of dashboards that comes with Log Insight. You don't need to install any special content packs. It just comes with it. And here, you know, we have overview and problems, kind of the two main ones that you might want to look at when you're troubleshooting using Log Insight. So this will give you some good stuff like the num errors by host. So, you know, it'll break it down. So it looks like my vCenter has 1400 um, error events in the past hour that it's been collecting. And then we can break it down into unique error types and, you know, um, unique. So if we go here and we just click on the basic error events over time, we get a, a trend, which is nice. So if we click here, um, we get just a standard list of all the events that it, um, it's ingested to have an error tag um, for our environment for, you know, the past hour of data. Now, this, this isn't too useful. Um, this itself isn't too useful unless maybe you want to run a query. You kind of want to uh, sharp, sharpen what you have instead of just having the text contain error or failure. If you want to break it down by host name or by app name, you can do that. 
um, where, where, where it becomes more valuable um, in this interactive analysis field is when we start looking at event types and event trends. So just by clicking on the event types, we already have you know, a little bit more useful information. Instead of just having a giant list of events um, that come in by um, date and time, uh, we have these event types correlated by you know, how many are coming in. So in one hour, I had 740 events that are named, you know, cannot read JSON file, no such file or directory, or 360 events that, you know, a lot of this stuff is kind of stuff that maybe isn't useful. Um, but if you kind of do want to break down in your environment, if you're having an issue and you want to see what's going on, um, this is a good place to start. So you can kind of see the highest number of events that you have um, per, per, per error event. Uh, for for you know all the events coming in, so as we scroll down, we see some of these events become less and less and less. So you know maybe you can ignore these events, but maybe somewhere up top here you have you know 20, 2,200 events saying that you have a, a scuzzy scuzzy uh, Q error or you have some kind of fiber channel error. Maybe you want to look into that. Maybe you want to see all the hosts that are, are reporting that error and see you know go into them and work with the storage team. Maybe see. Um, why you're having those either you know, SCSI disk errors or fiber channel errors, NFS errors, anything like that. So this is a good place to start if you want to see what kind of errors are flooding your log insight environment and maybe start working on those. Uh, I had a customer, uh, my previous employer before VMware, we installed this, we went to the event types and I think we had uh, 1 million events of uh, Active Directory trying to log into ESX and failing. Uh, so, you know, there's something wrong there. Uh, so we, you know, we, we looked into that and we had a, a user um, account, a service account trying to log into all, I think, you know, 2000 ESX hosts and failing because someone had changed the password or, or something changed. So this was hitting the uh, ESX, hitting all the ESX hosts, you know, uh, tens of 20 times per second, not even, you know, millisecond and putting up these millions of, of, of logs a day. So just cleaning that up just by finding it here and seeing that there were a million logs really helped out in showing that, um, you know, Log Insight sh showed some value there. And we were able to, you know, fix that and probably put a lot less strain on the ESX host agents that, you know, had to keep, you know, deny denying these failed logins to ESX. Um, another good area are the trends. So this doesn't show you how many events, it shows you the trend of events going up and down. So you can see here we have plus, we have this event right here, uh, looks like connection terminated by remote host. Uh, this this has been raising by this has been increasing by two events per hour. So um, you could see here, you know, and then as you scroll down, we can kind of see that events are moving up, and then hopefully it'll show. Um, you go to the last page, events that are trending down. So maybe you fix an issue in your environment um, that was very chatty, giving you a lot of uh, noise. Um, then you come in, look next 24 hours, that event's starting to trend down. So that means it's been fixed. It's not showing up anymore as much in the logs. And then of course, we can look at the um, trends that are going up. So if you notice a, a trend of an event going up, um, you should probably look at that. If you have some kind of storage event or some kind of um, network event, some kind of host event, that's, you know, you're getting two new events per, per minute, you're getting two new events per hour, and it's raising and raising and raising, um, maybe you want to look into that and see what's going on. So, you know, the event trends is a good place to go to start looking at um, what's going on in your environment and which events are kind of moving up and uh, gradually increasing in, uh, in, in severity until, you know, you have something that has been going on and on for maybe, you know, hours or days or weeks. You might have an event type, you know, something's not functioning properly, that's even going up in the trend. You can yeah, correlate those two together and basically say, all right, we have a problem here. Um, this event trend is new. It's only shown up in the past week, in the past 24 hours. We have to look at it, um, fix the problem, and hope the trend goes down. Um, so that's another good place to start. You know, this is all just stuff that comes with Log Insight. You don't have to build anything. You don't have to um, really create any dashboards. Um, it just gives you this information right here in the um, in the overview. So you know, we have unique uh, number of events, unique error events, or kind of what I just showed you. Um, you can also, you know, over this overview page, you can do for exceptions. You can do it for warnings over time, and um, we get all this with the built-in kind of log insight um, general dashboard. Not so much have anything you have to install. Um, so you know, and, and your customer. Go. go ahead. Quick question, uh, and almost more of a comment, I guess. But it, can you go back to the interactive analytics? Of course. Um, 
I feel like one of the biggest challenges we have with Log Insight with our customers, and, and it's I have the same challenge, right? It's like not the product, the interface or anything like that. I think it's great, right? Being able to to do all the things you can do. It's the logs themselves, right? A lot of times I come in here and, and just look at some of these event types. Like I have no idea what these mean. You know what I mean? Like the Precisely. Like, yeah. yeah. The third or the fourth one down there. Like is that good? Is that bad? I, I don't know. But I feel <laughs> like that's that's the biggest hurdle we have is understanding what these logs mean. You know what I mean? So any any comments or advice, I guess, in um, that aspect? My my comment would be um, if you're not having a problem, ignore the log. It might be showing you an error. Um, it might be showing you some kind of cryptic message. You don't have to go in and fix everything. Mm -hmm. um, when I first deployed Log Insight at my previous employer, I went in there. I'm like, oh my God, look at all these errors. What's going on? So you know, you, you start digging into some of these errors, and it's kind of just background noise. It's literally all background noise. Um, you can't come in. You can't come in to Log Insight and come into this event type and start. All right, 740 appliance update functions. Let me Google that and see what that is. Yeah. Okay, 360, or you can't do that. You have to specifically look for something that's wrong in your environment that's been reported. So, you know, maybe um, a, one of your app customers complains of latency in their app or in their virtual machine. Um, you go in here and you start looking for latency checks. Maybe, you, you know, you run a query that says, um, maybe looking for some SCSI sense codes. And you say, okay, um, I search for a SCSI sense code. I have two events showing that I have a disk here that um, has a sense issue with, you know, I have a D02, there's a problem with the disk. Um, so I just search that, you know, the event trend is showing I have two of these events in the past hour, maybe my disk failed. Um, maybe I have an issue with pathing. So, you know, you have to be able to show the customer that, not just let's go in here and look at it. Um, you have to be able to say to the customer, okay, you're having a problem, let's go in, Let's write a, let's, you know, let's search your storage issue. Let's search your networking issue, or let's just look in and see if you're having any networking issues. Um, because yes, that data gets overwhelming. A lot of it's background data. And you kind of just have to learn to have enough discipline to ignore all that and look for the problem that you have. So you have to look for that disk problem. You have to look for that networking problem. And you can't have a customer that, you know, is obsessive with errors because then they can just spend months trying to clean up all these errors and, and never succeed. That's just the way logging is for any product, you know, for for Linux, for Windows, it's just gonna spit out a bunch of events. A lot of those might be error events, but they might not might not be relevant to what you're trying to um, accomplish in the moment with a problem you're having right there. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's, it's almost taking the approach of just being more tactical with it as opposed to proactive yeah. and constantly looking at it. You've gotta have the use case for an issue. To start Absolutely. With. Okay. And we're going to talk about some some proactive things. You don't, yeah, you don't want to install Log Insight and go in there every day and look at the errors. That's that's going to waste your time. You have to think before, um, after you have a Log Insight deployed. Okay, what you know, what are our top ten problems that we have in our environment, or what are problems we've seen in the past uh, that we can write dashboards and queries and alerts for, and then have Log Insight alert you and have Log Insight pull up those queries in a dashboard um, when you think you're having those issues. Yeah, don't don't be reactive and just go into Log Insight and be like, man, look at all these errors. We're never going to fix these. Well, we're not going to use this product because that's just going to become overwhelming and the customer's not going to want to hear that or they're not going to want to use it. You know what would be cool? If if you look at any of our KBs, right, and it talks about an issue you may be having and then, you know, what the resolution is or what are the symptoms, it would be neat if we included in the KBs to say, if you're using Log Insight, here is the event you could look for to validate this is the error that you're seeing. You know what I mean? That, no, you're right. And I've, I've seen some KB articles where they'll, they'll show the log file and they'll say, if this is in your log file, then you know, you're having the issue. So if you're having a purple screen of death and you see this in your log file, um, the result of the, this error was the purple screen of death. You can, put that, you can put that event, as long as it's in the VPXA log or the, you know, the kernel log, you can put that in Log Insight and then make an alert out of it. Um, it doesn't specifically say, put this in Log Insight. You might have to do some manipulating, um, but you can definitely do that with a lot of the KB articles as long as they give you that um, event that's happening before the issue in the KB article. Right. I've seen that a few times with some, some things I've worked on my customer. You know, and we'll look, we'll have storage issues, we'll look and you'll say, okay, that event's not in the logs, but we still have to parse through the log. We have to download the VM kernel log. We have to parse through it. You know, maybe we have to do a find or something like that. Okay, that's not existing. If they use Log Insight and just pasted that um, line 
into Login Site and queried for it. Um, you know, it saves you uh, hours depending on if you have to export your your um, your bundle from a bunch of VSX hosts, you have to export your bundle from vCenter and, and, and parse through the logs. Uh, I've had my customer do that a lot whenever they've had a storage issue. They'll, they'll export all the logs and start poking through all these different things. And I'm like, you know, you guys own Log Insight. Just take this uh, string that our GSS told you is happening and punch it in there and let's see what time it happened. So you can correlate when you had your, your storage crash with, um, you know, when you think this change was made or when you think these uh, changes were made on the network switch or the, uh, the, the SAN switch. So it just, it, it makes troubleshooting so much easier. Not just from a perspective is of here's all your errors, look at them, but here's all your errors. Let's dig through it using some of these queries and see which ones we're looking for to correlate with any issues we had with our environment. Um, any other questions before I go on? All right, so um, kind of that's that's kind of the high level way to kind of find some errors using the, the event types in the field table. Um, kind of a, a better way to troubleshoot is to use some of our content packs. So we have this great marketplace full of content packs from all these different third-party developers as well as from us. So like I was saying before in our conversation, uh, you know, maybe the, the VM admin is is happy with just having ESX and, and vCenter logs, maybe VRA logs or trying to figure out, you know, orchestrator if there's any issues and they want to keep VMware products going and finding the errors in VMware products. But maybe it would be more helpful also if they were able to reach out and maybe if the customer has um, an app owner who's complaining that their ISS uh, server goes down sometimes, their SQL server acts weird sometimes. Uh, maybe they have some UCS servers or some HP servers, and maybe on those servers, you know, they have a back end that's, uh, you know, brocade storage. Maybe it's EMC VNX. If you install the content packs for your entire environment, from the storage all the way up to the app, um, and you get those logs pulling in, you can get a very, very good view of what's going on in your environment from top to bottom. And that helps for troubleshooting. That helps for, um, you know, understanding what's going on, not just with the hypervisor, but with all the all the components, you know, your 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 hypervisor might be running fine, ESX might be running fine, and your your VMs have no issue, but the customer's complaining that um, my web page isn't serving properly. You know, maybe instead of getting on a call with 80 people, with the server admins and with the um, storage admins and the network admins, uh, you know, if you have all those logs going into Log Insight from your VNX and from your um, your Cisco switches and from your UCS. Uh, you can go and log insight and say, all right, let's dig down for errors. You know, let's dig down. So go to dashboards. Hey, real quick question on the, the content packs. Um, sure. Some of those you'll see are Blue Medora, right? Created by Blue Medora. And every time I see Blue Medora, I think this is a, you know, you got to pay for it, right? As it relates to VROPs, at least. Is that the case yeah. with Log Insight or are these all free? Uh, every single content pack here is free. Cool. So Blue Medora might have made a content pack, maybe to whet your appetite, to give you some good information, and then make you say, okay, maybe we want to get the content packs for, for VROPs that are paid. But um, none of the content packs, uh, at least on this market page, or we have a few, I've, I've found a few other content packs that people offer. Um, I don't think there's any way to charge for them. So you literally just go here and you can click on anything cool. and install it and set it up. And there's even instructions how to set it up. So yeah, these are all free. Um, and then once you have it installed, You get a nice overview of depending on what you installed. Um, you can troubleshoot from from Linux, you know. So I have my Linux content pack installed, and we can do some some troubleshooting with some of the syslog overview stuff. And uh, looks like my Linux servers are pretty quiet right now. But yeah, um, it, it helps you kind of do that full full content pack um, analysis. Um, so you can go um, from the entire spectrum all the way up to the app, all the way down to the storage. Um, so here I have, you know, I, I installed the Apache content pack. So in my in my home lab, um, you know, setting up for this uh, th this session, I set up um, a quick virtual machine. All it does is host um, Apache 2, kind of this is the Apache default page, basically saying, "Hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm here. I exist." Um, and I have a a server, a NAS server. It's just a, a Debian server running on NFS storage. So you know, I wanted to give a, a good example of of how to troubleshoot using um, Log Insight to kind of see what's going on. Um, 
So you can see here, I have a script. All it does is very basic. All it does is hit this Apache website every 15 seconds to make sure that it's alive. So it's literally just a script that's saying, uh, hit, hit, the, um, hit Apache and give a, uh, give a 200 code. The 200 code basically says, um, I, hit, I hit your index.html and I'm all good. So, you know, I've got this running. So, you know, if this is basically simulating our user. We have users that are hitting our, our, our websites and kind of using them. Um, and then I have an alert set up in login site. Let's go to, where's my alert? Administration, user alerts. I've got this alert right here. It's called serving pages. Um, it's basically an alert that will notify me. Um, you could use a webhook if you want to send stuff to um, uh, like things like ServiceNow or ticketing systems. If you want a ticket to be cut every time um, this alert pops up, or you could send these alerts to logins or to operations, VROPs, if you want something to trigger every time in VROPs, every time this alert goes off. Um, that's a little advanced in scope. Right here, I'm just using an email. So I'm basically having this raise an alert um, every time it's checking every one minute. And if there's no page hits in a minute, it's going to send me an email alert. So I have this um, query basically turned into an alert that's basically saying, do I have a page hit? Am I getting a 200? Am I getting a 200? So I've got that script hitting every 15 seconds, getting that 200. And as long as in one minute, Login Insights getting that event that says that 200 was, was given, um, it's basically reporting that everything's OK. So I've got that um, alert running. Um, pretty, pretty simple alert to write. It just, you know, does this requested URL exist? Um, so then what I did is then, you know, you might come in in the morning as an admin. You might see that, all right, I got four alerts last night that said, um, um, you know, serving pages um, hit its uh, uh, criteria that match zero events. So it looks like, you know, 12.30 p.m. or 12.18 p.m. to 12.35 p.m., no pages were served. Interesting. What's going on? Um, so, you know, the first thing we did with Log Insight was create that alert that basically said, we have to see page views. Okay, we're not seeing page views. We got an alert in our email saying we're not seeing page views. Well, I have an Apache content pack already for the Apache service to see what's going on. Um, so if I zoom in for the last hour of data, oh, wow, look, I have an, you know, page views over time. Looks like something happened at 1230. I didn't get any page views. Not only that, my one remote host, which is that, Lin that Linux VM, stopped reporting in at 1230. So it's not just an issue of the Apache service not running. The remote host stopped responding too. And look at that, there was no, no bandwidth. So nothing was happening for that past half hour um, before it came back up. And it looks like everything came back up and started working as normally. So um, we can also you know, break it down. We could do the latest 24 hours of data. I have you know, 4,700 page views. And it looks like you know, last night and into today, we had two different events where um, Apache stopped serving the pages. So you know, our, our, our customer, our app owner is going to complain that basically this was down. What happened? Um, so that that can get pretty messy once the app owner asks you what what happened. You know, it could be Apache. It could be something that happened on the Linux host. It could be something that happened on the network, on the storage, on the hypervisor. You know, where do you go to look into that? You know, well, well, um, Login Site will give you all that information. So just from the the Apache overview, we can see that page view stopped. And if you know we want to drill in, we can. Um, we can basically say. Look at the interactive analysis and see that in the last hour, we had a page views, page views basically stopped until about 12.38. So, you know, we want to dig deeper. We can see Apache stopped working. Uh, maybe we want to dig. I have a dashboard here that basically says, let's see, Linux. So I am basically using, let me, let me show you guys first. So I'm using agents. Um, Login site has agents that you can install on your hosts, Linux and Windows. Um, so I have two agents running on my two Linux machines. Um, they're pulling in events from the um, Linux has um, logs both in var log, var log messages, and var log syslog. So I'm pulling all the events from those two those two files in the directory var log, and I'm pulling from these two agents. So you can see here I have two agents installed. One is Ubuntu, one is Debian. Um, I've gotten about 5,000 events 
in the past 20 hours from this agent. I've gotten about 2,000 events in the past 48 minutes from my um, NAS test that's got Apache installed. So once I install these agents, um, I basically said OS matches Ubuntu. And then we have these um, agent configurations. You can either build them or they come with the content packs. So this com came with my um, Linux content pack. And all it basically says is look in var log. And if you have a messages file, pull all the events from the messages file. If you have a syslog file, pull everything from the syslog file. If you have an auth file for authorizations, pull everything from that. So, you know, we have these very simple um, kind of code you can write that will pull events from all of those um, agents. So once we have the agents running, we can go back. We have those events in Login Site. And we can see here, I have um, a query. It's called Errors and System Logs. I built this myself. It's a basic query. All it says is if the text, so that the body of the event contains error, fail, critical, crit, critical, and the file path is var log syslog. So my um, Debian and Ubuntu hosts have their logs in var log syslog. It pulls any events and it shows them here. So basically what you see here, you know, I have these 42 events and then this one event and this one event. It's the same exact thing you're seeing here, except I made it a dashboard. So when you log in, you can go to your dashboards and you could read all the, you know, if you had any errors in syslog. So, you know, just looking at this Linux dashboard for the errors that happened in the past hour, 42 errors failed to assign IO. So right there, hmm, failed to assign IO. Did I have a storage issue last night? Well, um, you know, we were out and then maybe something happened to the virtual machine and it came down. So why don't we go look? NAS test, which is my virtual machine, failed to assign IO. So why don't we go look at the, um, why don't we look at our storage? So I have NAS store, I have an NFS plus storage dashboard right here in the vSphere content pack. The vSphere content pack comes installed with Log Insight. You don't have to install it and you get all these great um, dashboards on your own. So I have NFS storage backing that, that virtual machine. Let's see if anything happened. So if I look already in the last hour of data, NFS problems of NPy status restored. So hmm, interesting. So if I go to the last 24 hours, NFS problem event by status disconnected. So did a data store disconnect? Problems by server. Um, my home NAS, which is hosting the hosting the um, the, the data store for these ex, these ESX hosts, is reporting an NFS problem, and then the data store itself is also reporting a problem. And then we have some queries here we could run. NFS errors, NFS issues and disconnected has results. So, oh boy, what happened here? Um, so if we click this, no, oh, let's click this instead. So if we click our NFS problems event by status. Oh, look at that. Home lab, NFS data store zero one, restored. So it was disconnected uh, at some point. Um, we click on the disconnected. Oh, look at that. Um, we have four events um, that happened, you know, to today and last night. Um, VMS, VMFS NSX server disconnected. VMFS server disconnected. So it looks like there was a problem with the storage, um, which obviously would have affected the virtual machine, which would have affected the IO, which would have affected the Apache service um, if it went down. So I've got these reporting from my um, ESX host. All right, let's see what's going on on the NAS. So if I go to my dashboard, I have a NAS storage right here that I built. I built these myself because I have a Synology NAS. It's kind of a home NAS, so there's gonna be no content packs for it. So I basically built a, um, a query in a dashboard that basically says, you know, my, if, if a host name contains home NAS, which is the name of my NAS, and there's any power events, please let me know. So right here, if we just go right back here and we just look at the um, the dashboard, oh, look at that. We had a power state, both at eight o'clock and um, right after 12. So something happened and we have some NAS events here. Hey, Nico, real quick. How are you getting the logs from your Synology? Is it just syslog? Yeah, this is just plain old syslog. So if you log into your um, NAS and um, you go to the control panel, it's general settings. Um, system logs. 
So a lot of this is going to be the same. So, you know, my syslog server is log insight, UDP port 514, which is the standard um, port for logs, and I'm sending system event logs. So any, you know, any network switch you configure, any, any SAN you configure, any NAS, anything that's not, uh, you know, vCenter, any is exhaust, is going to use standard syslog to uh, ship events over to log insight. So what you have to do is put in your syslog server, which is your your VIP, your your um, virtual IP address for log insight, and that'll immediately start start shipping those logs over to uh, to log insight for that. And you know, Cisco switches are going to have the same kind of configuration, and you know, NetApp and EMC and SANS, all the same thing. You put in there's going to be a session a section for syslog client. You put in log insight for your syslog client, or you have your storage or networking team do that, and it'll start shipping the logs off to log insight immediately. So yeah, I'm collecting all those straight from my um, my NAS. And then we can see here NAS power state. If we click on this, go to the interactive analysis. So the NAS shut down January 24th at 12.15. Uh, my home NAS shut down. So obviously, there we go. If the NAS shut down because of an issue, uh, we're going to have the data store go down, which means we're also going to have the um, VM go down, which we saw the VM had I.O. issues when we looked at the uh, the Linux log for the virtual machine. Um, sorry. And then we, we saw those um, IO errors. We went down to the SAN, saw the SAN was powered off. Oh, I'm sorry, we went up, up to the virtual machine. It was giving us IO issues. Um, we went up to the ESX host. The paths were down for, um, paths were down for NFS, disconnected and reconnected. And then the, with the paths being down, we went up to the virtual machine and then we went up to Apache. And Apache stopped getting page views at exactly that same time. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to show. If you have everything configured properly and going to Log Insight, um, you can get very good information if you need to do troubleshooting. Um, you know, as you saw there, I was able to go all the way from the, the NAS all the way up to Apache using content packs, using dashboards and queries and alerts I built and using kind of stuff that's already provided with me when you install Log Insight to kind of just um, do a full analysis of the entire environment from storage to application and basically figure out using Log Insight that, all right, the NAS went down, that, that's what happened. And then you can go off to the, um, the app owner for the Apache site, be like, storage went down, we're looking into it. Go to your um, SAN administrator, hey, I noticed the storage went down at this time and you know, um, or VMs went down. Um, the the app owner, you know, wants to know what happened. Have your have your you know NAS team start looking to see what's going on. If there was an issue, if there was a power outage, if, if something happened, um, and it kind of gets you, it kind of gives you that feeling that you know what's going on. Sometimes a lot of VMware administrators, if something goes down, like I said, you have to get in that call with 80 people, and you have to be like, what happened? What's going on? Is the storage? Is the networking? I kind of see this. I see this on my end. I don't know what's going on on your end. Um, so if your customer has an environment that's transparent like that. And they can get all their logs into Log Insight. Um, they can provide a very good tool for troubleshooting and kind of making the you know, the Log Insight admin, or I'm sorry, um, the virtual machine admin understand what's going on and feel a bit better about what's going on. Because sometimes, um, in the middle of a crisis or in the middle of like a, a, a P1 issue, sometimes you don't know what's going on and it's nerve wracking. If you can go into a product and basically say, <coughs> "Okay, I see these logs coming from the storage. I see this coming from the networking. Okay, this is what happened. I feel a little better." having the knowledge and having the data to know what happened and I can make better decisions and give better information. Um, anyone have any questions kind of about that overview, about um, me going through that? All right, well, I hope it was really clear for you guys. Um, so there's you know, a pretty good way to troubleshoot using um, you know, the entire stack of content packs that we have. Another good way to do some troubleshooting um, is kind of just like, um, I was talking about with Steve at the beginning of the call, take some of your top 10 issues that you have once after you, you deploy Log Insight and kind of kind of work them into Log Insight so you can kind of figure out what's going on and see, see, see those issues in real time and respond to them. So I like this issue because my customer actually had it. They were complaining about it. Um, they owned Log Insight and they didn't even bother to use Log Insight and it was the perfect solution for them. So my customer, um, like a lot of customers, um, they have kind of a, a night shift of consultants who do upgrades, who do um, you know troubleshooting at night. They'll upgrade ESX from you know 6.0 to 6.5. They'll do patching and things like that. 
So, you know, after five, these guys come in and they do, they're, they're usually not employees, they're consultants, um, they're, they're doing contract work. They might not be as careful in making changes or reverting changes as an actual admin during the daytime might be. So, um, you know, the daytime admins kind of had to watch these guys to see what they were doing. And one of the problems that my um, customer had is that after the, the night shift would come in, they would upgrade ESX, they would put clusters, you know, take clusters, put stuff into maintenance mode, disable alarms, they would change DRS so that, you know, stuff didn't be motion during an upgrade. So they had a, you know, a, a solid stable environment to upgrade their ESX hosts. So sometimes my customer would come in in the morning and they'd be like, oh man, Nico, you know, DRS is disabled on this cluster. I don't know who's doing it. I have no idea, you know, if DRS isn't on, the, the virtual machines aren't going to balance themselves. And have performance issues. We come in in the morning. Machines are all cluttered onto one host, and that they haven't moved to another host. So the night, the night team will take a host out of maintenance mode, but with DRS off, that host will be empty all night. It won't be providing any value, and so you'll have another host with 50 VMs on it, straining. Then they'll come in in the morning. Uh, app owners will complain that their apps aren't running properly. They'll go in. They'll have poke around, see DRS is disabled, and be like, "Oh, to turn on DRS, stuff will start migrating." still causing issues while stuff migrates because obviously the motion causes, you know, some latency issues. And then by the time it's 1030, everything's running again and it just, it doesn't look good. So they're like, you know, is there a way we could look, you know, to see who, who's disabling DRS or what state DRS is at after these night guys come in? So the first thing I said to them is, well, did you look in Log Insight? And their response is, uh, no, not really. I mean, we have it running. It's collecting stuff, but it's not actually, we didn't actually look in it. And I'm like, all right. Let's go into Log Insight and let's see what's going on. So um, I work with them and I built them like a basic cluster health dashboard. So when they come in in the morning, um, we, ha we have more dashboards in their environment, but these are two sample ones. So we created a dashboard called DRS has been disabled and DRS automation changes. And we can see right here in the last 24 hours, um, I have triggered alerts for my DRS disabled in my DRS automation changes. So if we look, we click here to see what's going on. It's just a basic query that says DRS has been disabled, nothing else. Um, and then if we go to events, oh, look at this. DRS disabled on cluster lab in home data center. DRS disabled on cluster lab in data center home. Oh, who did that? Um, oh, look, these fair dot lab slash administrator. So we can see on this vCenter, um, this user right here, this metadata right here, VC username, vSphere uh, dot lab slash administrator. In their environment, it was obviously the domain slash username. Um, they're disabling DRS. And I don't see anywhere that it's turned back on. So what my customer did after we built this dashboard is he basically said, all right. So he, um, he exported the events into a CSV and he sent an email to that contractor basically saying, hey, we could see that you're disabling DRS at night. Um, we understand you guys are busy. You're doing a lot of work. Uh, maybe you're forgetting to turn it back on. But, you know, when you disable DRS, turn it back on because it's causing us a lot of trouble in the morning. Um, and then obviously the consultant responded, oh, I'm sorry. You know, we have so much to do and, that, you know, whatever. But ever since he sent that email, um, they haven't had many issues with DRS staying disabled up into the daytime. Um, and that was a big win for Log Insight since they have that reporting now and they can see what the consultants are doing at night. Same thing, we have a, a dashboard here. It's called DRS Automation Changes. So if we click on this. And that, that login level got much better with 6.5, right? The, it did. It was yeah. a lot more descriptive and verbose, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think in six, I think in six, they're using 6.0. It'll still show you kind of who disabled DRS with um, kind of, if you dig in and you look at the, the username, it'll show it. But with 6.5, you know, this has gotten way more descriptive up here. They like enable DRS on lab with automation level partially automated. I don't think we do this with 6.0. With 6.5, um, we could see here, oh, you know, the automation level was changed. Who's changing the automation level? Why are they doing that? So sometimes their consultants would change the automation level to um, manual to do some work and not change it back. Same thing as sailing DRS, not as bad, but then they'd have to go in and swap the automation levels. At least with this, when they wake up in the morning, you know, they can create an alert from this query, call it um, DRS changes, notify by email, or they could send it to the service now. So, you know, when they come in, 
um, they would get an email that says um, DRS automation. Um, we found one event matching DRS automation, and then they can go in and kind of take a look at it and see what's what's going on, who 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 the culprit is. Send them an email. They can log it over time. They can go back a month and see if the same person has been leaving DRS off for the past month. They can have a talk with him. They can understand, you know, this has to stay on, or have a talk with his manager. So it's 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 troubleshooting. It's also um it's also configuration management. You know, they they have some trouble with configuration management. So they could use Log Insight for some very basic configuration management to basically say, hey, you change this. Um, obviously, Log Insight's not going to change it back. They have to go in there and change it manually. Um, but it's a good way to seeing, um, see what issues have been, or I'm sorry, what, what parameters have been changed that they have to go back and change because um, um, work that was ha having been done at night. Um, so I thought that was a pretty good example of using Log Insight you know, for a specific use case for a customer. Uh, my customer came to me and they said, we have this problem. And I said, you have this tool, and it can provide you a solution. Um, we just have to build the, the dashboard and the query for it to solve your problem. So we literally spent 10 minutes in a, in a, in a, in a, um, in a conference room. We built the query, and you know, it's been six months. You know, this query is still running. It's still sending them emails, and it solved one of their problems. And all they had to do was basically come out and say, here's our problem. Let's go and solve it. You know, it, if you just deploy Log Insight and you let it run in the background, you know, some of these queries that come with Log Insight might solve some of your problems. So if you have SCSI issues, if you have um, certain issues with, you know, virtual machines going down, if you have any of the problems that come with these content packs and you make alerts out of them, cool. Um, that solves some of your problems. But a lot of customers are going to be a little more complex than kind of just the generic problems that Log Insight, these Log Insight content packs give you. So. Talk to your customer. If he's got Log Insight, go in with them and say, what are we trying to solve? Maybe come up with a top five or a top 10 list of problems they have in their environment. Sit down with them, kind of try and write those queries out, try and make those dashboards, and try and make those, um, those email alerts so that they can, they can cut tickets or they can get email alerts. You know, they can do whatever they want. Um, it's pretty powerful in, in, in regards to sending off those alerts. You can send them to many different places. Um, yeah, but the key is to sit down with your customer, figure out the problem, and work with them to kind of um, get it going and get get more value out of Log Insight so they don't come back in the next CLA and say, all right, Log Insight's pulling the data, but we don't use it. We don't want to, we don't want to renew our, our OSIs for this product. So, you know, get rid of it. It's a big win for TAMS if they can show the value um, that the product brings. And it's, you know, it's a big win for the customer if they can show their, their management that, you know, we caught all these issues that we wouldn't have caught before using the product. Does anyone have any questions on that? I have an example. Um, so in my home oh. lab, I have Log Insight running, and I guess it was almost a year ago now, I was preparing with two other TAMs to present at a VMUG, and we were going to be demoing something in my lab. So I gave them remote access into my lab, right? So I created some... AD user accounts for them, and I leverage Log Insight to just basically send me an alert anytime there's a Windows AD login event from these usernames, right? So that way, mm -hmm. I it's not that I didn't trust them, but I, I just kind of wanted to know how often they were coming in and, and what they were doing or what time of day, you know what I mean? So it, it worked really well. It was pretty cool. And then the other thing I, I'll let everyone know is my customer is a big VRA customer, so they use VRO, of course, underneath that. And if you've ever done anything with VRO, it's not very verbose as far as logging and telling you what happens when you're building your custom workflows. So we connected this, we connected their VRO to Log Insight, and they're leveraging Log Insight to basically provide a whole bunch more information around what happened when they run a workflow and why it failed or something like that. So it's, it's very valuable. So that you know that that's very valuable, and even just for you know giving information to GSS. So sometimes if if the customer is working with GSS and um they're troubleshooting, um, my customers experience this. Well, you know, we have the logs for the CSX host, but they've rotated off. So it was a week ago. We're trying to troubleshoot the issue now. Logs are gone. So you know if if you got, if your customer has Log Insight running, he can go in. They can query with GSS for a time range. You know, one week to one month. You know, depending on how much storage you give Log Insight, you should get every event from whatever ESX host you specify and whatever vCenter you specify. It's it's not going to come in a clean little bundle like when you export, but at least the data will be there. And then you can go, you know, you can go in and you can export the data. 
So you can export the data as a CSV, um, and then you can send that off to GSS, and they can do troubleshooting, maybe, you know, try to understand what's going on. And if you export everything, both, you know, the Linux logs, the VMware logs, the Apache logs, the, the SAN logs, if you're getting all that, GSS may be able to um, see things that they wouldn't be able to normally see if they just asked for a regular bundle and started going through that. So um, it, it provides a little more value when it comes to the you know troubleshooting with GSS, just because it gives you so much more information and it holds so much more, depending on, like I said, how much live storage plugins site has, you can go back. You know, something that happened six months ago, sure. Um, go Go back to July and query for July, get all those events, export them and send them to GSS. Um, it makes things a lot easier because um, my customer has heard a lot that, oh, the logs rotated away, we can't do anything. Um, you know, can we close the case, maybe wait till it happens again, and collect the logs as soon as it happens, and we can go through them. Um, so with Log Insight, the customer is able to get a little more um, flexibility in the number and the amount of logs they have and the timetable for those logs to kind of age away before, um, before they're gone. So that's another good good reason to have um, Log Insight over just standard standard bundles that um, vCenter and ESX might provide you. Isn't there a way to import logs, like a bulk import, some, something like that? So yes, there is a log importer. Um, you don't want to you don't want to import logs into your production Log Insight instance. That causes a giant mess. Um, the reason we have the bulk importer is basically um, so if you have if you have archiving turned on and you have um, if you have an NFS share um, specified after your after your live storage fills up so I have I have 450 gigs of live storage after that fills up um, it'll start taking the, the the first events that came in and start pushing them to the archiving it'll put them in special buckets that are about a, a gig in size and it'll you know it'll organize them by month day year stuff like that so sometimes you might have to go back for some auditing you know some kind of seven year auditing maybe some like i said some troubleshooting that you need to do maybe you have 30 days of logs and log re retention in log insight and the rest goes to archives so you can't just query those archives those archives are bucketed away in an nfs share so we have this log insight importer that you can run you basically stand up a brand new fresh instance of log insight that's empty um, you point it to the NFS share that you have, you run the Log Insight importer, it's a command line utility, um, and you give it a, a date range. I want to restore the logs from July 4th to October 3rd um, of 2018. It'll go into those archives, into the NFS archive, it'll pull those archives, it'll restore all those buckets into that Log Insight instance, and it will um, give, them, give, give those uh, events Back into the uh, the live archive or the live data of that empty log insight instance, and then you can start querying again, just as if you had a normal um, instance of log insight with the live data. So that's good for if an auditor needs something. Uh, say you have Oracle breathing down your neck, they want to make sure that your virtual machines haven't moved to any non-licensed hosts. You can go back for the past year and say, "Yep, check out these archives. We are we're going to pull these archives. It's in this special log insight, you know, running on some dev host or even some, you know." whatever test host and you can query and say okay between july and august and october uh nothing be motion to any of these hosts or between july and october here are the error logs here you go gss look at these and um you know figure out what's going on so that you know that importer is is basically strictly for uh restoring archive logs it's not for importing logs into your production vcenter um you might get if you try and import logs and you have an issue, you might get problems with like the keys and the database. You, you might get things a little screwy if you try and import logs and you know, you might have some, some same day ranges and stuff like that. I've never experienced it, but um, yeah, we do have an importer. If you need to import um, data from your archives into a log insight instance to query um, um, that old data. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, one last thing I wanted to show you guys, um, we do have integration with VROPS. So if you have a VROPS heavy customer, um, maybe the first thing they do is go into VROPS if they have an issue. So right here we have my NAS test. So say they get an alert from VROPS that um, you know the uh, their their NAS their, their their Apache server went down. So this object might show is not healthy. It shows is healthy now since it's up. But if this object is showing is not healthy and they want to see what's going on, they're like, hmm. Well, you know, if you integrate Log Insight with um, VROPS you get this cool little tab here. 
it's a login tab. You click on that, and you know if you have your SSL certs and your authentication set up properly, it should open right up to. Uh, we'll ignore this page. It'll open right up to um, login site, and it'll open up right to the VROPS ID of this virtual machine. So you know NAS Testa one in VROPS in VROPS's database has this VROPS ID. So it pulls you all the information that happened uh, on this server. And then if you want, you know, you could start doing your queries, seeing what's going on. So for the past 24 hours, we can look for errors. We can say, okay, looks like something happened here. Um, HD off, looks like we had um, remount error. This is probably from the, um, the data store going down and then the um, disk trying to remount itself. So yeah, if they, like I said, if they're if they're um, operations manager heavy and they want to go in operations manager first, start doing the troubleshooting, and then go to login site, this gives them that single pane of glass where they can do that. And then maybe you know if they want to see what's going on, they don't have to leave VROPS. They can go right, stay right in VROPS from login site. They can start doing their troubleshooting, see what's going on. Um, let's see what happened here. They can go have all their strange dash same dashboards, do their querying. And then, you know, if they're done, they're like, okay, whatever. And then they can move on and do the next thing. So maybe they saw that the NFS storage went down. Let's go to the NFS storage and see what happened. Oh yeah, look at that. Something happened here. Looks like, you know, we had a, a dismount or a mount, um, some kind of modification. So it's pretty cool since you get this nice drop down of every single part of the, you know, obviously except for the actual Apache. Um, but you know, you get a drop down of the NFS um, data store, you get a, um, you can see what's happening on the virtual machine. You can even see what's happening, you know, on the host. If you want to see what's happening on the host and say, okay, so what happened on the host for NFS issues within the last six hours? Oh, disconnect. Here's my disconnect that we got from, that we saw before when I was just regularly logged into Login Site. Same thing when you're logged into VROPS. You can do the troubleshooting here and move on between all the different, um, levels and you can see all your different alerts and kind of correlate them with the logs that are in Log Insight. So that gives you your structured and your unstructured data all in one location, easy to look at. Any questions about that? So it's smart enough to correlate the objects within VROPS to the logs in Log Insight, right? But it, that's only at the vCenter, vSphere level. So if you, let's say I have a domain controller, which is a VM and I've got a, a Log Insight agent on there as well. Mm -hmm it's not going to know that the, the logs coming from that agent are also coming from, it's not going to associate it with the VM object, I guess. Is that correct? No, no, I won't go that far, unfortunately. Um, it doesn't go at the agent level. Yeah, yeah it kind of just goes, it, it goes based on what um, operate VROPS knows. So VROPS knows the host, and it's got an ID for the host. It's got an ID for the VM, ID for data stores. So it runs off this ID, and it just right. queries off that. So got anything it. from the agents probably wouldn't generate an ID like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so kind of that's all I had, guys. Did anyone want to see anything specific on what I showed? Um, want me to drill down or have any kinds of questions? Well, I hope you guys found this useful. I hope you guys can go back to your customers and kind of use some of this information to um, show them that, you know, if you have Log Insight, just don't let it run in the background. It's a very valuable tool. You get a lot of good information with it. You can integrate it with your um, VROPS if you want to have the customer use VROPS and then break down into Log Insight. They can integrate it with their applications. They can integrate it with their storage arrays. They can integrate it with their networks. And they can do a lot of good troubleshooting um, more than just kind of having it sit in the background and collect and you know run in if there's a fire and start messing around trying to find something. Um, that, that, that's not going to make the product successful. Going with a customer and trying to figure out what their problems are, um, what kind of information they need from the product, building dashboards, building alerts. So then if they have an issue, they can be proactive, um, check out their dashboards, check out their alerts, and they can get a full picture of what's going on. Um, so they save a lot of time when it comes to troubleshooting um, and root cause analysis. Thank you, very good. Yeah, it's awesome. Cool. Uh, by the way, everyone's on mute, so if you do have a question, you'll just have to unmute yourself. All right. 